Good. Well, you seem more excited than me, and I've seen the fucking show. <laughs> Good manners are disappearing. When I was a lad, it was considered polite to tap a lady on the head before ejaculating. <laughs> I know. You know why kids wear their trousers slung low with no belt? It's because they're dicks. <laughs> True story. I attempted suicide once, came pretty close, killed the guy standing next to me. <laughs> it's all right, it was a goth, it's what he would have wanted. <laughs> Whenever my girlfriend says, fucking men, I always think, yeah, that is the alternative. <laughs> oh, what, sorry? Tosser. Right. <laughs> Just around, just toss her. <laughs> yeah, you know you're in fucking Glasgow, don't you, where <laughs> someone pays you 22.50 to tell you to fuck off. <laughs> Fair enough, fill your boots. Um, <laughs> on average, in the Northern Hemisphere, January is the coldest month of the year. But if you were in Australia, you'd be surrounded by cunts. <laughs> Any Australians in? Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why there's no women's boxing. The weigh-in. <laughs> the fight would happen then and there. <laughs> per square inch of head, people with red hair have 750 fewer friends than normal people. <laughs> A lot, isn't it? Are there any redheads in? Uh. <laughs> I think I'm all right if I look away. <laughs> My partner recently lost 11 stone. Well, I say that, I left her. <laughs> Fat cow. A lot of people like to smoke cigarettes after sex, but you can't buy cigarettes until you're 16, so I have to get them for both of us. <laughs> you think it's wrong I'm buying a 15-year-old girl cigarettes? <laughs> you think it's wrong I'm fucking her? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding does sound like a verb for child abuse, doesn't it? I'm kidding. Are you joking or touching kids? <laughs> Women say they want their ideal man to be the outdoors type, the kind of man that enjoys long walks in the countryside. And Women say they want their ideal man to be the kind of man that'll take control, the kind of man that's not afraid to take a few risks. Basically, what you're saying, ladies, is your ideal man is a rapist. <laughs> and it's true, if you're a rapist, you've got pretty much your pick of women. It's funny, cos it's true. <laughs> well, I thought I'd kick off with some jokes, Glasgow, not fuck about too much. I'll pause for breath and say hello. How are you this evening, Glasgow? Are you well? <laughs> like an angry mob. Bloody, well, I thought we'd kick off properly. We're in a beautiful room, the Armadillo in Glasgow. Bloody marvellous. I thought we'd, we'd start things properly, yeah? Cos everyone's dressed up. It's a Saturday night. Let's start things properly. Let's have a round of applause for the ladies. Let's have a round of, yeah, let's have a round of applause for her. Yeah, yeah, quite right, yeah. That's, actually, that's, that's probably enough. Looking around, some of them have made no effort. <laughs> You've not made an effort, have you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. Mongo, no lie. <laughs> Look at you. And so your comment there is, I haven't made much of an effort. Well, there's some cameras and some fucking lights. I don't know what you had in mind. <laughs> it's not like I come to your work and knock the sailor's cocks out of your mouth, is it? <laughs> Seems like a very weird thing from a quite a tough-looking man from Glasgow to say, Oh, you've not made much of an effort. <laughs> I thought you'd be dressed up prettier. 
It's a little bit prison rape coming from you, sir. <laughs> That's what it feels like. My point, there's an incredible amount of pressure on women these days to be beautiful and thin, and all I can say is, we've got some very brave girls in here this evening, really. <laughs> Terrific stuff. <sighs> so there are some stunning-looking women in here this evening, and some right dogs. <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> I'm joking. No one in here is stunning. It's all right to make those kind of jokes in comedy because no one really minds. Because, like, occasionally someone will go, Oh, yeah, comedy, it's the new rock and roll. It fucking isn't. I'll tell you how you can tell comedy isn't rock and roll. There's no comedy groupies. <laughs> There's groupies in rock and roll. There's no groupies in comedy. What girl is so into comedy she's going to come backstage and suck me off? <laughs> oh. That might be a premature end to the show. <laughs> Have her washed and brought to my room. I'm joking, don't wash her. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, now, what, girl, what girl's so into stand-up she's gonna come backstage and suck me off just so she can go... That tastes funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very fun job. This is all I do for a living, Glasgow. I travel around the country, I find large groups of people with sort of the same sense of humour as me, and then I tell them jokes for the evening. It's a lovely thing to do. It means I get to go everywhere. Any, uh, any Irish people in? Oh, if you, not that many. It sounds like, sounds like the roads in Glasgow are very nearly finished. <laughs> <laughs> I, was in, I was in Dublin recently doing a show, and I was there with a friend hanging out in Dublin for the day, what could be finer, and he dared me to say this at the end of the show. So right at the end of the show, I went, Dublin, I don't know much about Irish politics. That was pretty much their reaction. <laughs> a couple of thousand people going, I bet you fucking don't, no. <laughs> I said, I don't know much about it, but he dared me to do it, so I had to say it. I said, I don't know much about Irish politics, I just think we should have one Ireland united. <laughs> they were on their feet in Dublin, this guy is all right. And then I added, one Ireland united, under British rule. <laughs> they went fucking spastic. <laughs> Any Welsh people in? Any Welsh? Just one, we seem to have contained the problem. <laughs> I'm loving the Welsh. I really like Every time I go to Wales, I have a lovely time. The people are very friendly. But I get annoyed every time I go to Wales, not by the people, but by the signs. All the signs in Wales. Have you been there? All the signs. Road signs, tourist information, shop signs. Every fucking sign has to be in English and Welsh. Everything. English and Welsh. Huh? It's ridiculous, because it costs a fortune to do, and only 5% of the population of Wales can read. <laughs> Well, I like to think of myself as an equal opportunities offender. We've done the Irish, we've done the Welsh. Any Scottish people in? <laughs> Imagine my surprise. <laughs> Here's a question for you, my Scottish friends. If you were a homeless, alcoholic Scot and you had Tourette's, how would they ever know? Tell you where it's rough in England. I was there recently and I didn't realise it was meant to be rough, but Nottingham, I didn't realise this, Nottingham is the gun capital of Great Britain. Tell you what Nottingham needs? A sheriff. <laughs> it's quite a silly joke. <laughs> Are there any Scousers in? Yeah. Oh, there's a few there. All right. How, hi, the Scousers. You well? No. <laughs> what, what do you do for a living? Oh, sorry, I forgot you were a scouser there for a second. I apologise, I didn't mean to. <laughs> That's awkward. I'm not having a go at Liverpool. I'm loving the scousers. I'm lo it's a great place to do a gig. It's got, this, it's got a similar feel to Glasgow in terms of people heckle quite a lot. They join in, they're quite up for it. A nice sense of humour. Loving the scouse crowd. Although I will say this about Liverpool. Liverpool is the only city in Great Britain where JD Sports has an evening wear department. <laughs> They've got a fucking bridal shop. <laughs> <laughs> Can I interest madam in an off-white tracksuit? <laughs> I always make a bit of an effort, when I'm travelling around the country doing this job, I always make a bit of an effort to do the accent of wherever I am. And I think, generally, people take that pretty well. They like the fact you've made a bit of an effort. But sometimes people get chippy if you don't get it exactly right. I had a guy come up to me, I was doing a gig in the north of England, and this guy came up to me after the show, quite aggressive. Yeah. He said, uh, all right, our kid. I don't think you've got any fucking respect for this town. <laughs> Try and do the voice. We don't even fucking talk like that. 
Not bad. <laughs> I said, no, you've got me all wrong. I love Newcastle. <laughs> I've got a friend that got into an argument with a barmaid from Sunderland. Long story short, he ended up calling her a fat, ugly, Geordie cunt. <laughs> and she said, I'm no a Geordie. I'm Noah Jardy. <laughs> Sorry, that's a terrible accent. But it is how they talk. <laughs> I'm always impressed when I'm travelling around the place. I came up on the train, and I'm very impressed with anyone that can get on a train. Maybe some of you can do this. Can, can any of you get on a train and you don't have to ask, is it the right train? <laughs> I'm unable to do that. Whenever I get on a train, I've always got to find someone who looks like a grown-up to me. <laughs> and go, is this the right one? Is this the one for Glasgow? <laughs> and we all know the answer, because we've all been asked by a tit like me. The answer is always, hope so. <laughs> <laughs> hope so. <laughs> I've started doing it on planes. <laughs> <laughs> I went on holiday recently, and they told me on holiday, yeah, in the hotel, that they had special stuff in the swimming pool that turns the water purple if you pee in the pool. So I didn't pee in the pool. I didn't realise they had stuff for shit. <laughs> but they clearly did, because they were on to me almost immediately. <laughs> I told them it was a brown shark. They were having none of it. <laughs> I met a fat vegetarian. <laughs> I thought, well done. <laughs> All that on salad. You go, girl. Whenever I'm cooking, I always make sure there are vegetarian options. They can make do, or they can fuck off. <laughs> Women have a go at men for overreacting to man flu, but I think AIDS is pretty serious. Near where I live in North London, there's Hampstead Heath. I don't know if you've heard of Hampstead Heath, but there are toilets on Hampstead Heath, this parkland, that are notorious for gay cruising. This is where gay guys go in North London to hook up with other gay guys of an evening, the toilets on Hampstead Heath. Now, I live near there. Here's my question. What happens if you just want to piss? <laughs> You're buggered. <laughs> yeah, you can laugh. I found out the hard way. <laughs> the hard way's not the phrase to use there, is it? I've got loads of gay friends, and I'm sure there are loads of gay men in this evening. A few, certainly, not, not around. Are there gay men in? <laughs> Keeping it quiet in Glasgow. Well, I've got loads of gay friends. I'm sure there are some gay men in this evening. Uh, how do you decide who goes where in a, in a gay relationship? Because when it's a man and a woman, you know what goes where, don't you? Pretty much, most of the time. Apart from birthdays and Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good little nudge. I told you that was normal. <laughs> but if it's two guys, cos it's two guys, is it like calling shotgun in the car? Cos <laughs> I get annoyed if my friend gets to sit in the front. I'd be livid if he got to pop his cock in my bum. <laughs> that is the face I would do. <laughs> do you know how to tell if someone's gay, Glasgow? Do you know how to tell? You, you know when you get a posh lady, if, like, a posh lady is drinking tea from a cup and a saucer and she'll do the thing with her pinky? She'll do the... Ooh, delicious morag. <laughs> Another scone. <laughs> she's Scottish. <laughs> anyway, she'll do the thing with the pinky when she's drinking tea. Well, if a guy does that when he's sucking your cock... <laughs> gay! <laughs> well, you're sucking that like a puff, you bender. <laughs> What is he like? <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea, Glasgow. I'm not homophobic. Anyone that says I'm homophobic can suck my cock. <laughs> as long as he's not a fella, cos that isn't natural. <laughs> and I think I should be allowed to tell these jokes, because although I've never had sex with a man, I have fucked a girl ugly enough to count as a man. <laughs> My friend said that to me recently. My friend Louise, we were just chatting about nothing, and she went out of the blue. She just went, I've never been to bed with an ugly man, but I've woken up with a few. 
So I said to her, I said, I've never been to bed with an ugly girl, but I fucked a few in car parks. <laughs> Sorry, I should clarify, car park is just what I call the vagina. <laughs> because of my name. You don't look at all happy with the euphemism car park for the VJJ. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone this evening. I'm not sure what the, what the least... Probably the least offensive term, probably front bottom. So from here on in, we'll call it a front bottom and a back cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Who's seen me before, Glasgow? Who's been out to one of my shows before, yes? OK. Well, you'll know, I always stick around at the end of the show and say hi to people. Frankly, the least I can do on a day out. And the question I always get asked, I get asked this more than any other question after the gig, people say to me, what's going on in your head? Well, often they don't phrase it like that, they'll say, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> so I thought this evening what might be a fun thing to do is to take you on a little guided tour inside of my mind. <laughs> I've done some pictures to illustrate, now I'll, I'll show you what's actually happening up here. Oh, yes. Sorry, I've just noticed some, pe I've just noticed some people wearing masks of my face in what could only be described as a fucking freaky incident. <laughs> Why have you got... You've got a mask of my... Could you just hold it up, so... Could you turn that round just so other people can see how fucking freaky that is? <laughs> you know what the odd thing about that is? I was looking at you for a second, I was going... That looks familiar. <laughs> That's something about... Hang on, I'm usually shaving when this happens. <laughs> well, thanks for fucking freaking me out on the DVD record. I really fucking appreciate it. You're crazy bin. What, what's your name, madam? Claire. And what, what do you do, Claire? Excellent. Depends on the guy, probably. If <laughs> it's a one-night stand, you really let your hair down. Cool. What do you do for a living, Claire? A student. You're a student. Ah, that's the free time <laughs> to be making masks of comedians' faces. <laughs> <laughs> and who are you here with? Who's, who's your friend? Is she, is she your special friend? <laughs> Special friends. <laughs> Do you sometimes use the mask and use a strap on and pretend? <laughs> yeah. Pretend you're doing it like normal people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's how I laugh. <laughs> if I laugh at any point in the show, it sounds like Elmo's being tickled, <laughs> or a seal is being sexually molested. Well, thanks very much for making the mind. Thanks for making a fuss of me. Right. I, oh, sorry, I was going to take you on a guided tour of my mind. We'll kick off with some thoughts. <laughs> That's me thinking. Or shitting, it's unclear from that. <laughs> Not that I don't really like the term shitting, I find it a bit, it's a bit aggressive. I prefer to say growing a tail. <laughs> it's nice to be nice, isn't it? Right, some thoughts for Glasgow. White van drivers. I don't know, they think they own the road with their flashing lights and their sirens. <laughs> oh, there's been an accident. <laughs> there fucking will be. <laughs> of course, the thing they never do on soaps is watch TV, and that's because they'd see all their dead friends on the bill. <laughs> <laughs> Have you just spotted the AIDS? Well done. <laughs> Whenever I see a sticker on the back of a car saying Princess on board, it always makes me think of Diana. <laughs> I always think, don't upset Prince Philip, you'll be fine. <laughs> what? I didn't fucking kill her, don't give me a hard time. What superpower would I most like to have? I've given that quite a lot of thought. I think that's the sort of thing men think about quite a lot. What superpower would be best? I think invisibility would be the coolest superpower to have. <laughs> and really, the question is, if I was invisible, what would I do second? <laughs> I think we all know what I would do first. <laughs> Let's face it, if I was invisible, they'd think the ladies' changing rooms were haunted. <laughs> Where's all this ectoplasm coming from? It's <laughs> Something just tapped me on the head. <laughs> I 
Manners cost nothing. <laughs> I have a lot of ideas, and I'd like to share some of my ideas with Glasgow this evening. Yes, I'd like to share some ideas with all, all of you good people. I'm working on a book at the moment. I'm working on a book It's about a zombie that comes back from the dead, but the twist is the zombie is the good guy. But apparently it's already been done. It's called The Bible. <laughs> it's annoying, isn't it? I've had an idea for a TV show. It's called Jim will Fix It. <laughs> it's just me spaying cats. <laughs> the first guy that persuaded a blind person they needed sunglasses, he must have been a hell of a salesman. <laughs> There's a lot of problems in the world. So I like to do a little bit of problem solving every day, try and make the world a slightly better place. British women, that's you ladies, British women last year spent £280 million removing unwanted body hair. <laughs> Surely it would be cheaper and easier just to move to Germany. If you're worried about putting on a few extra pounds and you want to be ready for next summer with your beach body, why don't you visit Somalia and get some fucking perspective? <laughs> There's people with real problems, you fat cow. <laughs> I've solved another problem. It's only a little thing, but little and often with problem solving is probably the best way to do it. Um, I've invented a bird table for my back garden. It's three foot tall and it saves a fortune on cat food. I tell you who I think should team up. Neighbourhood Watch and Peeping Toms. <laughs> it's a good idea, isn't it? A marriage made in heaven. And it would add a whole new dimension to the term curtain twitching. Because <laughs> curtain twitching could mean checking up on the neighbours, seeing everything's OK. Or curtain twitching, female masturbation. <laughs> I feel we've crossed a line, haven't we, Glasgow? We've... <laughs> <laughs> We've definitely crossed the line. <laughs> facts. We've all got loads of facts inside our heads. It's something to do with living in this internet age. Uh, British people are at least one inch taller than we were 20 years ago. And that's because 20 years ago, we were all children. <laughs> 40% of people use their mobile phone to cheat on their partner. I use Mr Tinkle. <laughs> Mr. Tinkle is just a silly name I've got for my tummy banana. <laughs> Most bingo winners don't tell their other halves about their windfall, and that's because their husbands are dead. There are 427 licensed professional jockeys currently working in the UK. If you laid them all from end to end, they would stretch from here to here. <laughs> An iguana can stay underwater for 28 minutes or longer if you don't mind it dying. <laughs> Interesting little fact for you obsessive Star Trek fans are known as... Virgins. <laughs> Sorry. Are you a big Star Trek fan? Yes. But, you, but how, how old are you? Do you mind me asking? You seem like... You, what, sorry? 20. 20. Right. So, so definitely not a virgin in Glasgow. <laughs> what, what do you do for a living? Um, I'm a secretary. You're a secretary? Yes. Nice. Is it 1950 already? <laughs> <laughs> What? 2010, actually. All right. You seem, you seem a bit chippy. <laughs> oh, it is Glasgow, sorry. I'd love to chat more, but I'm at work. So. <laughs> Here, this will cheer you up. <laughs> oh, and you've gone for that. Nice. <laughs> what a lady. 
Let's talk about language. I'm slightly obsessed by language. I spend my life toying with it and messing around with it and, and trying to, you know, write jokes for you good people to laugh at. A lot of people don't like it when language changes. A lot of people don't like it, don't like Starbucks, for example, because what was small, medium and large is now tall, grande and venti. But I like the fact I've now got a tall cock. <laughs> That's taken away a lot of the stigma. A lot of people change the language that they use so as not to offend certain interest groups or individuals, which is fair enough, you know how touchy queers are. <laughs> PC has ruined some things. You can't say fruit salad anymore. It's now homosexual salad. <laughs> which is mental, because all salad is gay. <laughs> and cooey. You've got to be very careful in how you express yourself, because you could be saying the same thing, but if you pick the wrong words, you could cause offence quite inadvertently. I'll give you an example. I'll read you two sentences. The first one is entirely inoffensive. The second one, well, it could be misconstrued. I know, heaven forfend. But they both say the same thing. Interesting. I fell into a hedge, cut my face, and I can only partially remember the evening. It's fine, isn't it? Much better than saying, I fell into a bush, got gash on my face, and can only remember snatches. <laughs> Doesn't maternity, maternity makes it sound like you're going to be fat forever. <laughs> and some of you will be. <laughs> Doesn't Nazi gold sound like a greatest hits? <laughs> Let's talk about fears, our subconscious mind. That's quite an interesting area, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the best way to conquer a fear of spiders is next time you see a spider, Imagine it naked. <laughs> Has anyone got like a morbid fear of spiders? Like a. Someone's got one over there. Go. Oh. Your brother has. <laughs> but so that's kind of. Oh, well, he's here. It wasn't just a random. I haven't got phobia, but my brother has. Maybe you could help with that. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Kyle. Kyle. And you speak for him. When you, when you say your brother, you're not from Paisley, you're not going out or anything, are you? <laughs> oh, no, I'm just asking, because... What do you do, Carl? Not in the new, but... What, sorry? Nothing the new. <laughs> Nothing the now. <laughs> it's a new... Kyle and I just workshopping, we're coming up with a new children's character for Scotland. <laughs> He's called Nothing the Now. The unemployed donkey. <laughs> Nothing the now? What the fuck is that, Kyle? <laughs> well, what do you do for a living? You're unemployed? Uh, I. Yes. All right. Well, good. It was lovely having you here. <laughs> Especially in view of the fact a lot of the taxpayers pay for you to fucking be here. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's face it, we're in Glasgow. There's a lot of people applauded that that have never paid any tax in their fucking lives. <laughs> yeah, there's tax on spirits, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what I'd like to do, Carl, my gift to you, give something back to the community. <laughs> Not just put care in it. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to cure you of your fear of spiders. You up for this? Uh, like Darren Brown style, with sort of hypnosis, cure your fear of spiders. You up for this? Fabulous, all right, because it's happening. <laughs> OK, imagine, Carl, you're at home, in bed, under the duvet, as snug as a bug in a rug. Mm. <laughs> and you're dreaming of whatever unemployed people in Glasgow dream of. <laughs> I don't know, being on the social for another few years. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> oh, and then I sign my name and the check keep coming. Oh, <laughs> long way. OK, so you're at home in bed, uh, but then what I'm saying is you're in the most safe and secure environment you could possibly be in, you're under the duvet, safe and secure and warm. Mm. <laughs> Dreaming away. A spider, Kyle. Size of my hand. Big hairy motherfucker. <laughs> Crawls on your face as you lie sleeping. Doesn't wake you, Kyle. You're still dreaming of nice things. <laughs> Buckfast and the like. <laughs> uh, 
Just sits there for a while on your face car as you sleep. Lays its eggs in your tear ducts. <laughs> and scampers away to its enormous giant spider nest under your bed where it lives. <laughs> you can check later if you like. <laughs> okay, you wake up in the morning fresh as a daisy. Lovely, ready for a busy day. Well. <laughs> you're awake anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, you're absolutely fine the next morning. That's my point. About a week later, you're sitting reading the paper, you know. It's a weird itch. A thousand spiders touch up your eyes. <laughs> has, that, has that helped at all? <laughs> that needs work, doesn't it? Sorry. <laughs> if it's any consolation, it's only Carl. Doesn't matter. Franklin D. Roosevelt famously said, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. Of course, he's dead now, killed by a spider. <laughs> i tell you what I worry about, and I'm sure many of you share my concerns. I worry about climate change. Climate change, or to give it its official scientific name, autumn. Do you know we produce 48% more carbon emissions than we used to in the 1970s? But that figure could be halved if you just divided it by two. <laughs> tell you what I do really worry about, and I'm, I'm sure Carl will be thinking this is entirely justified. I worry about going mad. I've got a friend that went mad last year and he ended up killing himself. He took everything in the medicine cabinet, choked on a surgical bandage. That's not how I would do it. If I was going to kill myself, I know what I would do. I don't want to be morbid, Glasgow, but I know how I'd do it. I would dress up as Superman and jump off the top of a building. <laughs> how fucking awesome would that be? <laughs> and I would do it at four o'clock in the afternoon during term time. Because <laughs> you'd want a couple of hundred kids going, wow, Superman, and then, whoa, fathers for justice. <laughs> Such a harsh word. I prefer to say when Kiss Chase goes too far. <laughs> and what exactly is aggravated rape? Oh, not only did he rape me, now I miss my bus. <laughs> On the positive side, at least with Rohypnol, there are no bad memories. Let's talk about childhood, Glasgow. Yeah, childhood memories, childhood thoughts, yeah. One in ten British kids has never been to a beach in this country. Imagine that, growing up without ever having seen a dead cormorant with a tampon on its head. <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to get a tattoo, but my parents said I had to get it somewhere that didn't matter, so I had it done in Hull. <laughs> Is anyone here from Hull? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing, this is weird. You can have sex in this country when you're 16, but you can't buy pornography until you're 18. That's an odd law, isn't it? So you can have sex when you're 16, but you're not allowed to watch other people have sex for another two years. So if you're 16, you can have sex, just don't look down. Let's talk about faith and spirituality, an important part of our psyches, I'm sure you will agree. Christians say, and there may be Christians in this evening, Christians say, Jesus died for your sins, be good. I say, he's already dead, fuck it. <laughs> What's he gonna do, get deader, fill your fucking boots, mate? <laughs> also, if he died for your sins and you don't do any sins, you've made him look a right cunt. <laughs> I don't believe in the paranormal per se, but I do have a spirit guide. Well, I say spirit guide, you might call it a sat-nav. <laughs> paranormal is actually derived from the Greek. Para, meaning you're not, a normal. <laughs> Let's talk about travel, yeah? The main reason Americans, are there any Americans in? For the best. <laughs> the main reason Americans don't have passports is they have trouble fitting in the photo booth. Luckily, they've developed Google Earth. <laughs> More than 2.3 million households have no one in full-time work, which is a convoluted way of saying there is a place called Scotland. 
<laughs> really? Good luck. <laughs> of course, not all Scottish people are alcoholics. A lot of you are recovering alcoholics with drug problems. <laughs> Let's face facts, Glasgow. If you Scottish ever find a way to deep fry whiskey, you are fucked. <laughs> Interesting little fact for you hopscotch was originally invented in Glasgow by children trying to step over their alcoholic parents. <laughs> True story. Talk about some dumb things. I see a lot of dumb things around. I see a lot of dumb signs. I was in a supermarket. I saw a sign that said, buy two, get one free. I only wanted one, so I took the free one. <laughs> I don't want to show off about my showbiz lifestyle, but I was in a Yates's wine lodge. <laughs> yeah, I was in a Yates's wine lodge, and I got talking to the barmaid, and I asked her how many types of wine they did in Yates's wine lodge, and she said, both. <laughs> Let's talk about some important social issues. There's a guy I work with, and every day he has what looks like fish fingers. I think he was in a fire. <laughs> Don't tell me that's too brutal for Glasgow. <laughs> Most domestic fires need just four things to start. A source of oxygen, a source of heat, gambling debts, and an up-to-date insurance certificate. <laughs> I hate people that make loud noise on public transport, particularly explosions. <laughs> Annoying. <laughs> I got into an argument. I said women have a lower pain threshold than men. She said, try childbirth. I said, I have. How do you think I got here? Do you know the NHS is currently so underfunded that couples wanting IVF treatment to help them conceive are being told to go and fuck themselves? <laughs> Remember, dogs die in hot cars. Or a heavy blow to the back of the head will work just as well. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's the one that got you? OK. <laughs> I came home the other night. My girlfriend was dressed up as a French maid. Very disappointed, the house was a fucking state. <laughs> Filthy slut. <laughs> well, let's talk about love and romance and sex. Let's talk about sex, Glasgow. There's a very commonly held belief that men think about sex every seven seconds, which I think makes talking to your dad creepy. <laughs> British men spend on average 22 minutes on foreplay. Of course, they spread out between all of us over the course of a year. <laughs> Women who read romance novels have twice as much sex as the national average. While I say sex, what I mean is they yield the precious softness of their silken female innocence <laughs> to the crushing firmness of his intent. <laughs> Sorry, I came over all Catherine Cooks in there. <laughs> it's not a great phrase to use. I'd be like painting the fourth bridge. <laughs> the average person has two pounds of meat lodged in their colon. So come on, love. Of course, most people don't know this, but confetti, you know confetti that you get at a wedding? Confetti represents fertility in the seed of man, which is quite accurate, because a lot of it does end up in the bride's hair. <laughs> Women have a go at men because we're no good at multitasking, but then you have a go at us when we piss in the shower. <laughs> it's like we can't win. Speaking of multitasking, I had a threesome last week. My girlfriend is pretty cool, but if she finds out about this, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I did have a threesome. I know you're probably thinking, yeah, probably you, a girl, and another bloke. No, nope, it's actually me and two blokes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. 
Well, that feels like it's quite enough from inside my head. Should we leave it there for now? Yeah. Let's leave it there for now. Marvellous, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, do you ever do this, Glasgow? Do you ever get asked to do the washing up and you do it really badly on purpose so you never get asked again? Do you do that? Yeah. My girlfriend does that with blowjobs. <laughs> Seriously, her blowjobs suck. <laughs> and it's not just me, a lot of my friends have commented. My girlfriend likes to have the lights on during sex, because yeah. she likes to be able to read. <laughs> Which I think is to be encouraged in a girl of her age. <laughs> I'm kidding! <laughs> She's actually scared of the dark. <laughs> that divides people, though, doesn't it? Some people like the lights on, some people always have to have the lights off. I like the lights on during sex. My best mate likes to have the lights off. And fair enough, his missus is a pig. <laughs> My girlfriend and I, we do a little bit of role play in the bedroom. I pretend to be a swarthy Italian Lothario, and she pretends to be asleep. <laughs> she gets pretty into it as well. Sometimes she's there for seven or eight hours. <laughs> I'm actually quite conservative sexually. I tried SM once. Why well, say I tried SM? I punched a girl. Who's in a long-term relationship? Give us a shout if you're in a long-term relationship, yes? Yeah. Oh, loads of us this evening. Okay, well, you'll know, as I know, in a long-term relationship, it's all about compromise. It's about finding that common ground. Because if you're not both happy, neither of you can independently be happy. No one's happy when the other half has got a face on, are you? <laughs> so you've got to find that common ground. Here's a good example of compromise from my life. This happens a lot in our house. I want to go out for the evening, yeah, night out. She wants a romantic night in. So as a compromise, we go dogging. <laughs> We, we don't. I suggested having sex outside once, and she went, what if someone comes? <laughs> I said, we'll go home. <laughs> OK, I've got a question for the men of Glasgow, OK? You're representing the men of Britain this evening, OK? I've got a question for you, gentlemen. Has any man in this room ever used the phrase, making love? <laughs> no, well, no, of course fucking not. <laughs> Purely the preserve of the ladies. Ladies love that phrase, making love. Making love. <laughs> making love. But you know why it's called making love? It's because we're going to make you do it, love. <laughs> <laughs> Th thanks very much. <laughs> Fucking rate. <eight. laughs> I got stopped by one of those charity muggers. You know the ones with the clipboard in the high street? And you think, oh, I've dodged him, and then there's another... Oh. <laughs> they work in teams, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> anyway, I got stopped, I got cornered. He said, can I have a word about the homeless? I said, certainly. Lazy. <laughs> Off you fuck. <laughs> I was in London, and I, I saw a homeless guy with a dog on a piece of string. Classic look for a homeless guy. <laughs> and I was walking by and the homeless guy said, could you spare some money for food? And my friend said, eat the dog, then we'll talk. <laughs> Even I thought that is harsh. <laughs> I'm joking, I didn't. <laughs> Truth be told, there was no friend there, I said it. <laughs> I was just checking to see you thought it was funny first. I do a lot of gigs for people less fortunate than me. Only last week I was in Stoke. <laughs> for those of you that don't know, it's sort of the, the English equivalent of Dundee. <laughs> Are there people in from Dundee? Yeah. Oh, there's some girls in from Dundee. That's good, because I've got money for chips and I wouldn't mind sex. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact the girls from Dundee applauded that. <laughs> Just the, yeah, you're going, yeah, fuck, chips, chip, ooh. <laughs> should, I, should I do my impression of me seducing a girl from Dundee? <laughs> so, that's all you need. Oh, 
fucking marvellous. Um, <laughs> now, listen, this isn't what the show is about at all, but I was briefly going to tell you about a thing that I'm doing at the moment. It means a lot to me, and I was just going to take a moment of your time. I've started a little charity, just a little thing of my own, and it's going great, but I, I, I didn't want to put anything up on big screens or put any leaflets out or, or anything in the programme. I was just going to briefly tell you what the charity that I've set up does, and then if you want to get involved, you could just Google it. But it's not really what the evening's about. The evening's just about having a laugh, but I thought I might just... Sorry, I'm wittering on now. But you could just look it up and Google it if you want to get... <laughs> You know, I'm just saying, you know, because well, you could be proactive rather than me sort of forcing it down because people get bored of that. OK, what we do is we, we send obese children to the rainforest. <laughs> well, I don't mind you tittering because we're already seeing fabulous results. And if you want to be part of that, it's feedthetigers.com. <laughs> okay. Their faces light up. <laughs> Not the children, obviously, they're fucking petrified. Although it is quite ironically funny seeing them trying to run away. <laughs> He's a bit late for cardiovascular now. <laughs> you should have thought of that when you were waddling to Greg's, you fat fuck. <laughs> Flooding. Flooding's pretty bad. I saw a woman on the news in her flooded front room, crying. I thought, crying's not open. If anything, you're making matters worse, love. <laughs> I am committed to getting young girls off the streets. <laughs> Sometimes it's just for a half hour, but it relaxes me. I find it very <laughs> relaxing. Sorry, I'm not sounding very charitable. I do do my bit, you know. I've created a foundation for battered women. It's really thick to hide the bruising. It's weird. Domestic abuse is still a real sort of taboo subject, isn't it? People don't like talking about domestic abuse. And ironically, that makes the problem much worse because the charities that deal with domestic abuse, their problem is a problem of communication because the women that they're trying to reach out and communicate with, the battered wives, are the very women that won't shut up and listen. <laughs> Tragically, this is the only language they understand. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's like the lion from The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> I wouldn't last a fucking day in this city, would I? Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I know, I know there's a degree of civic pride in Glasgow because uh, domestic abuse was invented right here, wasn't it? <laughs> Around the turn of the century. Well done, we salute you. <gasps> what, someone say something there? <coughs> Old Firm Day is Domestic Violence Day. Is that a thing? Is that real? There's a, there's a woman there just going... <laughs> oh, yeah. What, sorry, just tell me that again. Old... So, when Rangers play Celtic, it's the day for domestic abuse. <laughs> I fucking love it that you've got it diarised. <laughs> Has anyone had this recently? Have you, has, have, has anyone made an appointment with the doctors recently? I phoned up for an appointment with my doctor and I got an appointment in three weeks' time. I thought, oh, that's good, I'll either be better or dead. <laughs> but then they gave me option B. They said, well, you can come down and see the locum doctor. It's not your doctor, it's just our doctor we've got down there. And if it's serious, you can come down and wait. So that's what I did. I went down to the doctor's surgery and I waited for like four hours. And eventually I got called into the little treatment room with the doctor. Walked in there. Stunning looking doctor. I mean, properly, 10 out of 10. Absolutely gorgeous, exactly my type. I went, uh, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> she said, I'm a professional, you're a grown man, just tell me what the problem is. I said, OK. I think my cock tastes funny. I don't know if you've got a test for that. <laughs> but I've had an idea. <laughs> it's weird the gender stereotype in that joke, isn't it? Like the idea that when, when I say doctor, most people imagine a man. That's very odd, because we all know there's loads of female doctors. But if you're honest, when I say doctor, do you imagine a man? Yes? 
It's weird. And when a nurse is even worse. If I say nurse, do you imagine a woman? Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a slightly overactive imagination there. <laughs> oh, yes. I mean, like a proper nurse, not like a stripper in a pub. <laughs> when I say nurse, do you imagine a woman? Yes? yes. But we all know there's loads of male nurses. Although it's not pronounced male, you don't call them male nurses. It's actually pronounced male nurses. <laughs> Not that I don't want to offend any male nurses, or indeed your boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> Just nod that one in. Good. Um, I'll never forget what my granddad said to me. I shit in a bag. Please kill me. <laughs> a great way to warm up pensioners in winter is cremation. Do you know you lose 50% of your taste buds by the time you're 75? So it is OK for your nana to live on cat food. <laughs> my nana, my mum's mum, used to make me a jumper every Christmas. Did anyone else have that? She used to make me a, a jumper every Christmas. Much better than the ones in the shops. No. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> I remember one year she made me this burgundy monstrosity. Sleeves way too long, and in the front she'd embroidered Blacks Go Home. <laughs> I said, I'm not wearing that. It's burgundy. <laughs> and the sleeves are too long, you crazy racist whore. <laughs> My girlfriend recently had a phantom pregnancy. And now we have a little baby ghost. <laughs> it's quite a sweet joke, isn't it? It's not hurting anyone. And that's why, every time I tell that joke, I kick a tramp. <laughs> Even things up karmically. <laughs> Who's got kids? Have you got kids? Yeah. Who's got, you've got kids? OK, I've got kids. Well, I've adopted, but it's the same, isn't it? It's a family. Well, fostered, but as I say, it's a there's a bit of paperwork, it's nothing. Sponsored. I've sponsored a child. Well, it's not a child, it's a panda. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a donkey. I didn't sponsor her, I gave her half an apple through a fence. <laughs> that always gets the same reaction. It's always the, the woman going, that's not the fucking same. <laughs> and the bloke going, have you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> as long as I don't have to see a fucking photo of it. <laughs> a lot of men use moisturiser, but I'm old-fashioned. I just spit on my hand. What did you think we were talking about? <laughs> oh, come on, don't give me that look. We've all been there. Come on, love, the film starts in ten minutes. We haven't got time for your fancy foreplay or your expensive lubricant. We're going to be buttering the baking tray the old-fashioned way. <laughs> Ironically, buttering the baking tray is the phrase that will stick. So you've just given him a look as if to say, I thought you invented that. <laughs> How does he know what we do? <laughs> flavoured condoms. Has anyone in here had any dealings with flavoured condoms? <laughs> a few of you. The girl from Dundee's thinking, I thought that was one of my five a day. Another banana, lovely. <laughs> my point on flavoured condoms is they are a waste of money. Okay? Turns out my girlfriend doesn't have a sense of taste in her front bottom. <laughs> or back cunt. <laughs> which is just as well if you think about it. <laughs> well, don't think about it. I feel like I've been up here long enough. I can open up a little bit. I can share with you. Glasgow, this evening. I can share, yes? yes. Okay. My girlfriend has fallen asleep during sex before. <laughs> that is embarrassing. <laughs> that is awkward. But not as awkward as the time she woke up during it. <laughs> Hello, 
love. <laughs> You're up early. <laughs> yeah, I was just getting on with a little bit of sex. <laughs> I'll make you a cup of tea when I'm finished. That'll help get rid of the taste. <laughs> yeah, I know it's weird. I've seen a doctor. <laughs> Good, well, that's... That's pretty much the first half of my show, ladies and gentlemen. But it's mainly me talking in the first half. Any questions so far? Anything else you'd like to know? Yes. yes. Oh, I'm going to presume all the questions are for me. <laughs> if, that's... if I'm not being too starry and arrogant. <laughs> Although there's something about my name in this town. <laughs> Jimmy! Just sounds right. <laughs> Go on, what was the question? Yes, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of Wittgenstein's theorems. <laughs> um, you'd suck off his mum. <laughs> He's done you. He has done you. <laughs> I, I, I'm not from Perth, so I may never have to make that decision. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. You sound like you come from a very broken home. I'm not suggesting you fucked your mum, but only because you wouldn't want to two-time your sister. <laughs> Why do I laugh like a sexual predator? <laughs> I like the way that a sexual predator sounds better in your accent than any other. A sexual predator. <laughs> I, I, I don't know why I laugh like that. It's one of life's mysteries in the same way as why you dressed as a gay lumberjack. <laughs> we, we may never know. <laughs> well, like big, thick logs. Hmm. Yeah. How big's my cock? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not sure whether your mother would be comfortable discussing it, but it's... <laughs> Truth be told, it's quite small, but it smells like a big one. What, sorry? Where's the weirdest place I've had sex? His mum's bum. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. It was his dad's. <laughs> Any other questions, thoughts? Why do I look like Hitler? <laughs> nine, nine, nine. <laughs> Who said that? What hotel? <laughs> ah, well, it's quite a posh one, so it'll have to be your place. <laughs> I don't think... I don't think they'll, they'll let you in. They've got a policy on that sort of thing. <laughs> and even though I'm not paying you, it looks like I am. <laughs> yeah, go on. Best audience? What, sorry? Where's your best audience? What's the best audience? Well, without being um, sort of, you know, sycophantic, sir, without sucking up to you, he said in a very patronising manner. <laughs> uh, Glasgow's pretty good. I mean, that's why I'm recording the DVD here. But I don't know if you know the cameras, but it's... It's, uh... It's just a, it's just a fun place. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a quick story about Glasgow, just before, before we move on. But I'll tell you the reason I'm recording the DVD here. The first time I ever came to Glasgow to play at the Stand Comedy Club, I got on the back of a taxi, yeah? And I said to the book, because I wanted to make a reference to where was rough in town. So I said, excuse me, driver, where's rough in Glasgow? And he said, for you, everywhere. <laughs> and then I was on stage later that night, yeah, on stage, and I told that story on stage, and all I said was, and I thought this was a comment that was beyond any kind of argument, all I said was, Glasgow is quite an aggressive town. And a guy down the front went, no, it fucking isn't it? <laughs> No hint of irony. No, it fucking is, not <laughs> <laughs> I thought this place will do for me. <laughs> now, do you all like drinks and sweets, yes? Yeah. Everyone likes drinks and sweets. Do you sometimes get annoyed paying regular prices for sweets? Do you wish you could pay two or three times as much for exactly the same Maltesers? 
Cos if you do, you are in luck. <laughs> We're about to have an interval, and this venue is about to rape you. <laughs> I'll meet you back here in 20 minutes for more jokes. See you then. Get that thing where you walk into a room and you totally forget why you've gone in there. You just kind of go, the, what am I meant to be? <laughs> Do you ever get that? Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you cat people or dog people? What would you say, cat people or dog people? Because <laughs> to me, it all tastes the fucking same. <laughs> people of restricted height. Some of them don't mind being called midgets, but they hate being called dwarves. Some of them, fine with dwarf, hate being called a midget. So what are you going to do? What I do is I call them all Oompa Loompas. <laughs> None of the little fuckers like that, do they? <laughs> are there any midgets in? I mean, I haven't seen any, but then that's part of their charm. They could be... <laughs> I don't look down on dwarves. That's probably gone over their heads. <laughs> How could I stoop so low? <laughs> Life's too short. And just because you're a midget doesn't make you any less of a person. <laughs> Truth be told, I fucking love dwarves. But I never tell them that I love them because I don't want them to get big-headed. <laughs> a lot of people say women get more attractive after a couple of drinks, but I think they lose a lot of their charm vomiting and pissing in the street. <laughs> Welcome to Glasgow. <laughs> they just put speed bumps outside my local school. Wow, I'm pretty sure it's a speed bump. <laughs> I'm 90% sure it was a speed bump. With a satchel. <laughs> I make my own vegetables. I've got a hammer. <laughs> Is it wrong, Glasgow? You be the judge. Is it wrong to call the disabled seating area of a theatre the cabbage patch? <laughs> Is that wrong? Double amputees, you've got to hand it to them. <laughs> but they will drop it. If I lost both my arms, I'd probably just shrug it off. <laughs> I, don't care, I, was doing, I was doing a gig on this tour, I was telling that joke, and there was a guy sitting where you're sitting, right down the front there, missing both his arms. And he laughed at that joke, but then at the end I noticed he wasn't applauding. You know that moment when a girl locks eyes with you across a crowded room and says, Yes, Your Honour, that's the one. <laughs> I saw a headline in the paper, it said, Rapist Strikes. I thought, what does he want? Better pair conditions. <laughs> He's outdoors in the park. He's on flexi time. Talk about your job satisfaction. <laughs> what have we got, unionised sex offenders now? What do we want? Get in the van. When do we want it? Get in the van. <laughs> women ask weird questions. Well, the women in my life have always asked weird questions. My girlfriend said to me recently, she said, which of my friends do you think is prettiest? Well, that's what she said. What I heard was, I fancy a fight. <laughs> I don't know much about women, but I know there is no correct answer to the question, which of my friends do you think is prettiest? There's nothing I can say that she'll go, Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> and there's going to be trouble, so I thought, well, I might as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. So when she asked, which of my friends do you think is prettiest, I said, well, Karen is pretty, but Susan does that thing with her tongue. <laughs> talking during sex, Glasgow, where do you stand on talking during sex? I think there should be very strict rules on talking during sex. Rule number one, don't. <laughs> Rule number two, shh. 
and those are the rules. <laughs> my, my girlfriend talks during sex. I don't mean sexy, dirty, filthy talk. I'd love that. That'd be awesome. No. She says the most mundane shit you've heard in your life, <laughs> mid-coitus. That means whilst fucking. <laughs> the thing you do for chips. I'll give you an example, OK? So, a, a, a couple of weeks ago, we were making love. I'd made her do it love. <laughs> we were about halfway through. Well, we were nearly finished, truth be told, but she didn't know that. <laughs> I was in... I was actually... And she said, Why do I leave my keys? <laughs> I said, Well, they're not in your vagina. <laughs> I've had a good route round. I was sure I would have noticed something. <laughs> I'll check your bum. <laughs> She said, you will not. No one's birthday. <laughs> so I've come up with a way of dealing with this, OK? I could just say to her, could you not say mundane things during sex because it sort of kills the mood for me, sort of ruins it, you know, kills the moment. I could just say that, but that would be literally no fun at all. So what I'm doing is whatever she says to me, no matter how mundane, whatever she says to me during sex, I try and make it sexy. Set myself that challenge. It's a lot of fun. I'll give you an example. She said to me a couple of weeks ago, while we were, she said, uh, the recycling's coming tomorrow. <laughs> well, more accurately, she said, the recycling's coming tomorrow. <laughs> so I said, the recycling's not the only thing coming tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to separate your paper and plastic. <laughs> Doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> That's my sexy voice, by the way. <laughs> I've kind of gone for a 1970s black exploitation New York City voice. Because then you can say things like, I'm coming. If I just use my voice, I've just got to go, I've arrived. <laughs> Has anyone heard anything more mundane than that during sex? What's the most mundane thing? Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> Hurry up. <laughs> what was that? These chips are cold. <laughs> Oh, oh, bless. Any others? What, sorry, what was that one there? Rather cold today. Rather cold today. <laughs> cold today. Oh, aye. <laughs> That's like small talk at a bus station. I suppose we're in Glasgow. It could well have happened at a bus station. <laughs> I got the little... <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> any, any others? Yes. Is it in yet? <laughs> so, have you said to this boy here, this, uh, there's a man covering his eyes now with a... <laughs> oh, God, she hasn't. That's not your boyfriend. I'm sure you don't limit yourself to one. Um, <laughs> then... <laughs> but you've said to a man, is it in yet? <laughs> you, but you've said that to him, you've looked a man in the eyes and gone, is it in, is it in yet? <laughs> Well, you don't want to look down and check, and you've got no feeling in your vagina whatsoever. <laughs> so without... Well, hang on, just make eye contact with me. Without looking down, can you tell if there's a cock in you now? <laughs> what was your one? My grand's in hospital. My grand's in hospital. <laughs> you were fucking someone, and they said to you, my grand's in hospital. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby, tell it like it is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to break your hips. <laughs> <laughs> Any other mundane things during sex? There's the ice cream van. There's the ice cream van. <laughs> Did you start going out with him when you were quite a lot younger? <laughs> oh, there's the ice cream van. Shh, 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 shh. Most natural thing in the world. <laughs> I had one the other week. A guy came in with his wife. They'd been married like 30 years. And she had said to him, and she said she'd said it, OK? She said to him, during sex, she said, now I've got your full attention, let's talk about those curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I'd been him, I would have gone, curtains look fine. <laughs> 
Another one that comes up a lot, you're boring me. Which my response would be, yes, I am. I don't know what this says about us as a nation, but one that comes up all the time from audiences is uh, change channels. <laughs> Are we having sex with the television on, people? Change channels? I think if someone said change channels to me, I think, well, I would know they were talking about the television, but I would be very tempted to go, thanks very much. <laughs> I don't mind if I do. <laughs> of course, the classic is, uh, Celie needs doing. Hopefully not in that voice. <laughs> Ceiling needs doing. <laughs> to which my response would be, yeah, I'm going to fill your crack. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, if you're in a long-term relationship, you'll be familiar with this conversation. It's the conversation that happens five minutes after you think you've gone to sleep. <laughs> you know the one I mean? TV's off, lights are off, books are down, everyone's washed their teeth. You're in bed. Night. Night. Love you. Love you. <coughs> Night. Night. <laughs> Five minutes after that, just as, you're, just as you're drifting off into sleep, the most insecure voice you've ever heard in your life, out of the darkness, if we broke up, <laughs> would we still be friends? <laughs> I said, what do you mean, still? I bought my girlfriend some lingerie, it was her birthday, and she'd hinted at the stuff she wanted, so I went to, I think it was Agent Provocateur, for these fancy kind of set of pants and bra and stuff. Well, quite right. <laughs> so she was quite impressed, she opened it up on her birthday morning, she was really kind of into it, and she went, oh, these are beautiful, darling. But they're not my size. <laughs> I said, don't worry, I've had a chat with a woman in the shop, and she says, you can have an operation. <laughs> I knew I had to lose some weight in the last year. It's a very sad day for any man when his girlfriend suggests he comes on his own tits. <laughs> you ever done that? Have you ever mixed up a fat person and a pregnant person? It's embarrassing, isn't it? Especially if it's a fella. <laughs> I had a fat girl come up to me recently after a gig. Well, I say a fat girl. She was either fat or 18 months pregnant. She was big. Bubbly, you might say. <laughs> Not with an effervescent personality that filled a room, no. Shaped like a bubble. <laughs> she was a comfort eater. I don't mean she was eating for emotional comfort. She was eating till she was comfortable to sit on. <laughs> she wasn't a size zero, she was a shape zero. <laughs> anyway, she came up to me after that. Well, she pretty much surrounded me. And she said, you're not meant to use the term fat. I said, you're not meant to eat cake for breakfast. <laughs> you're not meant to deep fry Mars bars. And gravy isn't an energy drink. <laughs> and if I can't say fat, because I wasn't using fat in a judgmental way, I was just, just purely being descriptive on stage, I was using the word fat. Apparently I can't use the word fat now. If I can't say fat, what term does she prefer? Chunky monkey wobble slob? <laughs> Fatty boom batty? Or blubber naught? <laughs> and if you're offended by any of those terms, how about a salad? <laughs> I, I tell you what, I, I'm, I'm a bit, not distressed at, but a little bit upset. But the term real woman. I used to really like the term real woman. It meant a voluptuous, fuller figured, curvy, beautiful, buxom, plump lady. You would say she's a real woman. Doesn't mean that anymore, does it? Real woman is now a euphemism for chunky monkey wobble slob. <laughs> you say she's a real woman when you mean she's a really fat woman. <laughs> she's dangerously close to being two women. <laughs> Have you ever fucked a girl so fat you think it might count as a threesome? <laughs> and I tell you when you know you're with a fat lass, when you find yourself in the throes of passion thinking, is that boob or arm? I'll give it a lick, just to be sure. <laughs> a lot of people think horizontal stripes make them look fat. No. What makes you look fat? It's being fat. 
the only horizontal stripes making you look fat are the ones in Viennetta, lasagna and sponge cake. <laughs> I had a fat girl come up to me after a show a couple of weeks ago, a very nice girl. She said, look, I really enjoyed the jokes, but I'm a fat woman. How do you think I feel? I said, squidgy. <laughs> <laughs> I was asked recently, Glasgow, by like a proper publishing company. A proper publishing company said to me, do you want to write an autobiography? And I've given it a little bit of thought. I've made some notes and I thought we might go through the notes this evening and see whether we think it's a good idea for me to write a book. Just out of interest, if I wrote a biography, who here would, would buy it? <laughs> well, it might just be worthwhile. You never know your luck. Um, well, look, I, I've been asked to write it, so I thought I'd make some notes. Obviously, my first thought when they said, do you want to write a biography, was, well, I wish I'd kept a journal, but I never kept a journal because I'm not a fat goth girl. <laughs> The first thing you've got to talk about, if you write one of these kind of cash-in-on-your-fame biographies, you've got to talk about being famous. You know, has fame changed me? No, I've always been a bit of a cunt. <laughs> it's a very odd thing, being famous. I get this thing happen now where about once a week someone will come up to me in the street and go, I know you from somewhere. Do we go to school together? And I've discovered there's no way to say to another human being, no, we didn't go to school together, but do you own a television? without sounding like a total fucking arsehole. <laughs> what, sorry? Is that Buckfast? Is that Buckfast? No, that's water. You've probably heard of it. <laughs> Who's the most famous person I've ever met? Well, I, I once met her. Uh, the, um, well, it's quite an impressive one. I don't want to show off, but, you know, you know, you know... No, you know how villages have got idiots, yeah? <laughs> I met the idiot for the whole of Glasgow. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and so... Uh... One of the biggest cunts in the world, yeah. I married him. And you married him. That is, again, that will only happen in Glasgow. <laughs> you call someone a cunt and their wife goes, yep. <laughs> oh, don't I know? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, yeah, I'll record it in Glasgow, it'll be fine. <laughs> really? Really? The big, big advantage to being famous, as I see it, is if I ever get Alzheimer's, I'm going to be absolutely fine. If I ever forget who I am, I'll be fine. Because as I wander around town for the day, people are constantly going, Oh, look, Jimmy Carr. Oh, look, Jimmy Carr. Oh, look, Jimmy, oh, look, Jimmy Carr. Jimmy Carr. So if I forget my identity, I'll be constantly reminded. The downside to that is about 5% of the time, people get it wrong and think I'm Alan Carr. <laughs> so about once a week, I'd end up back at the care home sucking off an old fella. <laughs> No, oh, I don't really like it. <laughs> looks. Let's talk about my looks. <laughs> well, could be worse. It could have been a pop-up book. <laughs> Looking at me, you wouldn't think I was voted the fourth sexiest man in Britain. And you'd be right, I wasn't. <laughs> People often ask, how do you get the Jimmy Carr look? Well, get your mother to drink heavily during pregnancy. <laughs> Sorry, mate, no offence. <laughs> I do look a little like Roger Federer, and a lot like Ian Beale's daughter from EastEnders. <laughs> yeah, I wish that wasn't funny. <laughs> I wish that didn't ring true, but sadly it does, doesn't it? It's an odd thing, being on TV, being on stage in front of all you people, it makes you more vain than you should otherwise be. I mean, I'm a 37-year-old man. I shouldn't be vain at all. I realise you can't polish a turd. <laughs> but you can roll it in glitter, can't you? So... <laughs> you do the best with what you've got. And I always try and make the best of myself, you know, try and, you know, dress well and present myself well. It only ever leads to embarrassment, vanity. I remember the first time I did a room this size in London, my older brother came to the gig. Yeah, I've always, like, looked up to my older brother. Came to the show, came backstage afterwards. He didn't say anything about the performance. He just went, are you wearing makeup?" <laughs> And to my eternal shame, I went, 
No, it's tinted moisturiser. <laughs> I realise now, I couldn't have sounded gayer to him with two cocks in my mouth. <laughs> Let's talk about my career. I've got a terrible boss, self-employed, and I'm currently on sexual harassment charges. <laughs> of course, on the other hand, you are looking at Employee of the Month. <laughs> How can I explain what it's like? You know when you walk past, like, an electrical goods store and they've got all the TVs in the store hooked up to one camera and you kind of do that weird thing of waving at yourself as you walk by? And there's an odd moment where you go, well, I don't want to stop waving because I'm still waving. <laughs> That's what Channel 4 is like for me. I'm like their fucking screensaver. <laughs> and for the moment, it's just stand-up and TV for me. My acting career has been put on hold, and that was a decision taken by you, the British public. <laughs> yeah, a lot of comedians that I started with have now gone to Hollywood to make movies, which is great, you know, well done them, but there's something called loyalty, and there's something else called a lack of talent and no offers. <laughs> I've just noticed, does that... Sh can you all just keep a little bit quiet for a second? I've just noticed there's a man over there that appeared in a blue jumper. I think he might be asleep. If you could just keep quiet around him. Just shush, shush. Oh, and fuck, he's woken. <laughs> fuck. Hello? <laughs> You're having a fucking weird dream, aren't you? <laughs> I wouldn't fall asleep again. Some, something very bad will happen. <laughs> I was going to teabag him. Shit. <laughs> it's annoying, isn't it? Sounds like it would have been a very popular choice. <laughs> What's your name? Steven. Steven. You had to have a little thing, though, didn't you? <laughs> All right, and what do you do, Steven? Footballer. You're a footballer. Who, who do you play for? Stran Ra. Stran Ra? <laughs> He's a footballer. He plays for Stran Ra. <laughs> OK, I'm fucking shit at football as well, mate. Don't worry about it. Don't, that's fine. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Don't feel bad. <laughs> Stran Run, is that five a side, is it? <laughs> you got a full team? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I bet you're a great kicker. <laughs> you lazy fuck. Try and pay attention. <laughs> it's not like people fall asleep when Stran Ra are playing. Oh, no, hang on, that's a bad analogy. <laughs> Lazy fucker. <laughs> I've noticed a trend in publishing. Just the last couple of years, the more depressing the childhood segment of the book, the better the book does, the better the biography does. People love reading about kind of horrible, depressing childhoods. So I've had a crack at writing a heartbreaking childhood memoir, which wasn't easy for me, because my childhood was actually fine. <laughs> I was in a lot of fights at school. Why not a lot? One. And it wasn't a fight, it was a debating society. <laughs> and I wasn't in it, I was watching. <laughs> Still, don't fucking mess. We were poor, but we were happy. I remember every Sunday morning you could hear my dad banging away, trying to get some life out of the old boiler. <laughs> then he'd give up, go upstairs and fuck my mum. <laughs> I simply adored our pet dog, Patch, but... One day, my parents called me in and told me that Patch had been called away to the giant potato sack with bricks in it in the sky. <laughs> For weeks, I wasn't changed. I wasn't given proper food. Someone stuck the TV on in the corner and I just lay there in my own filth. God, I loved university. The other thing I've noticed with books is, like, they, they, anything with a spiritual element always does brilliantly. Look at the Bible. That's still a bestseller, even though they give it away in hotels. <laughs> I guess you could say I haven't found Jesus, but then I think Jesus should try and find me. He's omnipotent, I'm on telly. How tough's that? <laughs> make a fucking effort, Christ. <laughs> or Christ, make a fucking effort. That works either way. I'm cynical about religion, but I'm not a cynic. I, I do believe in other things. I'm willing to believe in aliens, for example. I mean, if aliens don't exist, then who was it that abducted me at the age of 13 and transported me to a room full of weird flashing lights and subjected me to a terrifying rectal probing? <laughs> oh, that's right, it was the guy that ran the youth centre disco. <laughs> yeah. 
The thing that put me off religion was I was raised Catholic. Any other Catholics in? Yeah. Yeah. It's a weird thing, isn't it? Like Catholic school, if you go to Catholic school, sex education is very odd. Sex education, they don't want kids to be told about sex. They want to show them. <laughs> the Catholic Church are weird. The only kind of contraception they seem to approve of is fucking young boys. <laughs> Granted, you're not going to get them pregnant. One of my teachers was very sexually repressed. He used to take it out on the kids. <laughs> One thing stuck in my head. <laughs> he was responsible for the worst phrase in my childhood. You know sometimes something bad happens and then someone says something and it just makes it ten times worse, right? It was already bad. About 60 of us, my whole year, went swimming. Big swimming regatta thing. And my friend Anthony got an erection. <laughs> That's embarrassing, right? It's a bad situation. The teacher didn't make it any better by pointing out said erection in case anyone had missed it, <laughs> and then describing it as, wait for it, nature's thumbs up. <laughs> it is weird, the stuff you remember. When you look back, like, I've sort of made some notes about my childhood. I thought I'd be able to remember the stuff they taught me. How an oxbow lake is formed, how World War I started, you know, the stuff they teach you at school. I can't remember any of that. I don't know what this says about me as a person, but I remember with total clarity the day Matt came into school and told us all he could suck his own cock. <laughs> I remember clearly because he told us how he did it. He said he did it by falling backwards into the bath. <laughs> I remember at the time thinking, there's an accident that's gone terrifically well. Most people laughing at that. Just one man down the front giving me a look as if to say, I might have a bath later on. <laughs> Mum, Dad, I'm just having a bath. Why isn't the water running? <laughs> no reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting area. I think sexual awakening is... An, for a biography, that's always a good chapter. My uncle actually taught me the facts of life, but I can't tell you what they are because it's a special secret between me and him. Seriously, I can't say if I tell you my mum and dad will both die. <laughs> when I was about six, I was given a doll. I don't remember the doll's name. I just remember the game was you had to point to different places and say how many times it happened. <laughs> Did you not have that game? <laughs> Jealous much? One of the things that's holding me back from writing an autobiography is the fact that if you write one, you've got to talk about your private life in a very public way, and it changes the nature of celebrity. It makes you into more of a sort of tabloid celebrity. So I'll just dip my toe in the water. I'll talk about it a little bit, try and get used to it. My girlfriend is, without a doubt, the most beautiful girl I could get. <laughs> I'll cut to the chase on this. People always ask, have you ever cheated on your partner? Well, yes, it's, it's happened. It's nothing that I'm proud of, but... Well, it was last Christmas, and I read all the Trivial Pursuit questions before we played. <laughs> and then I fucked her sister. <laughs> which, if anything, made it worse. She's forgiven me now, though. She told me recently, she said, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong. Good. <laughs> I thought it was weird, because she was crying. So I said, what's the problem? And she said, if you don't know, I'm not going to tell you. So I guess she's organising some sort of surprise party. <laughs> I thought it would be romantic to take my girlfriend back to where we first met, but she said, Don't make me go back there, Mr Jimmy, I'll cook, I'll clean, I'll be better. <laughs> I worry about that joke. Is that just racy lacism? Oh, you're raise your lacist. <laughs> it's not, it's an accent, it's fine, don't cry. I get asked, what's the secret of comedy? Graham Norton's got a wife and two kids. <laughs> Doesn't leave this room. <laughs> People ask me what I'll do if I ever run out of jokes. Well, I could always write an episode of Two Pints of Lager. 
People seem mildly sort of obsessed. I always get asked, what did you do before comedy? Well, I used to work on the oil rigs off the coast of Aberdeen. I, I did. I was a male prostitute. <laughs> I knew I knew you from somewhere. <laughs> Never forget a face. All the back of someone's head. Um, I often get asked, what's your pet hate? Well, he doesn't like it if you put things in his bum. <laughs> but who can resist a cat's bum hole? It's like a towel holder from the 70s. They're strangely alluring. Right, I'll tell you what, I was going to talk to you about this. This is the question on this tour that's come up more than any other from audience members, yeah? What order would you do Girls Aloud in? <laughs> Most men in this room have given that concerted thought. Even though we know it's never going to happen, we want to be ready just in case. <laughs> in case we ever get a knock on the door from the five girls saying, I want you now, <laughs> we want to be able to say, come in, ladies, the rotor's on the fridge. <laughs> I can explain myself. <laughs> Cheryl first. I'll tell you why Cheryl first. I find her the most attractive, so I definitely want to get that one done. And let's face facts, I might only have one in me. <laughs> five is not going to happen. Be honest, guys, five is never going to happen. But like every man in this room, the only time I've ever wanted to have sex twice is before I've had sex once. <laughs> The ladies know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You've all been over-promised to. <laughs> I'm gonna make love to you all night long. <laughs> or until I get sleepy. <laughs> Let's see which comes first. <laughs> I came first. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I would have the ginger one in the room at all times. Stop me going off early. Oh, Cheryl, I'm just about to... Ooh. <laughs> oh, we're back in the game. <laughs> Has anyone got any other questions this evening? Anything else you'd like to know? <laughs> Why do I get my suit? I get all my clothes from high and mighty. It's not to do with my size or shape. It's my attitude. This is actually a suit for an eight-year-old giant. <laughs> I don't know why that's a giant. <laughs> it's more like a thunderbird. <laughs> you get the idea. Any other thoughts, questions? How much money am I making from this gig? Well, I'll put it in terms that you'll understand, sir. A hundred money. On, sorry, what was your question? What age did I lose my virginity? It was the 20th century. <laughs> no, I, I lost my virginity. I was 26 when I lost my virginity. Now, I realise there'll be grandmothers in Glasgow thinking... <laughs> well, that can't be right. <laughs> did he not have a sister? <laughs> no, I was 26, but I'll tell you why I was 26. Because I was Christian growing up. I had an imaginary friend. Uh, that I used to talk to. I know it sounds mental now, but I did. So that was part of it, but partly I wanted it to be special. Well, not special, but consensual. <laughs> and then I got to 26 and I thought, fuck it. <laughs> How much is a train ticket to Dundee? <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts? What, sorry? What's my favourite song? I would say probably Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Where it began, ah, oh, I can't begin to know it. But then I know it's growing strong. First there was spring, ah, oh, then spring became the summer. Who'd have known it can... Well, sorry, I could have just gone on there. Hands. <laughs> Touching hands, reaching out, touching you, touching me. Da, da, da. Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Good times never seem so good. I'd be inclined ba, 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 
to believe they never would. Hey, I'll do that. <laughs> My favourite song. Yeah, do some karaoke halfway through. Why not? Hmm. I like that, and I also like uh, Baby Got Bat by Sir Mix a Lot. <laughs> I like big butts, and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't do nine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I come back over here. The best way to impress a woman is to compliment her, as in, "Core, you're a fast runner. You nearly got away." <laughs> we all know that no means no, but what does it mean when they shout help? Means the gags come loose. <laughs> Two things really annoy me. You know when you buy stuff and it comes in that super hard plastic that you cannot get a start on? Do you know the stuff I mean? You, and you end up chipping a tooth. And then you go and get scissors. <laughs> You'd never dream of getting the scissors first. You think, I'll try my teeth. Da. And then the worst thing is when you bought scissors and they've come in that stuff. <laughs> that annoys me, that, and genocide. Oh. <laughs> Backseat drivers, they're all the same. Why are we going into the woods? Please let me go. <laughs> I tell you what I love, 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 and I bet you all love it too. I love the snooze button. Do you love the snooze button? Yeah. Love the snooze, because after eight hours sleep, I tell you what I need, a nap. <laughs> Strange but true, isn't it? I wake up in the morning, I'm more tired than when I went to bed the night before. <laughs> I wake up thinking, I'm exhausted. <laughs> How tiring is sleep? <laughs> I need ten minutes just to take the edge off that. <laughs> have you got pets? Who's got pets, yes? Yeah. I can't have sex if the dog is looking at me. <laughs> Those big eyes looking up as if to say, what are you doing? <laughs> and that's why... <laughs> I didn't fuck a dog. We made love. <laughs> I'm a typical guy, I love all sports. Pilates, hopscotch, <laughs> conkers, you name it. <laughs> Any cricket fans in? <laughs> Interesting fact about cricket. Cricket was invented at Rugby Public School when some boys were playing football and one of the boys forgot the ball and they're all standing in a field and nothing happened. <laughs> I like the developments that have been made in cricket over the years. Initially, there was test cricket. That takes five days of your life that you don't get back to play. <laughs> then there was one day cricket, a vast improvement. Then 2020, that only takes three hours to play. I'm looking forward to cricket 1-1 one, one, and ultimately cricket fucking zero, where no cunt plays cricket because it's fucking boring. <laughs> The Paralympics, that is what sport should be about. <laughs> Did you watch the Paralympics when it was on in Beijing? Inspirational or inspiring global event. About three people saw it, it would appear. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it to people that didn't see the Paralympics. It's sort of like the Paralympics. It's sort of like a children's book where all the broken toys have a picnic. <laughs> well, you can get off the high moral ground if you didn't even fucking watch it. I had a favourite event, and all the events are interesting, I think, because you're watching sports that you've seen before, sports that you've taken part in, done in a different way because they're being done by disabled people, so you're getting kind of a different angle on it, different rules, yeah? So they're all interesting. My favourite, and you've got to promise me, look this up if you, if you think I'm making it up. Google it when you get home and have a look on YouTube. Treat yourself. It's awesome. Paralympics, the blind football. <laughs> OK, so they get a normal... I'm not talking about Stran Ra. OK, so what they do in the blind football at, the, at their Paralympics, they get a normal football, normal standard-issue soccer ball, they put a bell in the ball, <laughs> and blind people play football. Their spatial awareness is that good, they could tell where the ringing is, find the ball, not only find it, kick it and score a goal. How fucking awesome's that? And Team GB got silver. Gold went to some kittens. <laughs> I don't know how they got into the stadium. <laughs> Presumably no-one saw them. And there was an unfortunate incident when the referee blew the whistle for the final time, someone kicked his face off. 
as you'll be aware, I'm very comfortable talking about disability on stage because disabled people are part of our community, part of our societies, of course they are, but also disabled people are the most patronised group within society. Everyone patronises the disabled, it's like a national pastime. Here's a good example for you. If you've got any building in this country with more than four storeys, there's a limit on the number of wheelchair users that can be in that building at any one time because what if there's a fire? If there's a fire, throw him out the fucking window. <laughs> What's he going to do? Break his back again? <laughs> What's he going to be? Double paralysed? <laughs> you heard about Dave? He's been double paralysed. <laughs> it's pretty bad. He's got to go around in two wheelchairs. <laughs> I heard about a blind guy climbing Everest. I thought, well done, but what for? <laughs> the view? Surely the great advantage of being blind is there's no need to travel. Get a foot spa and a heat lamp, you could be fucking anywhere. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm thinking of starting a charity sending blind kids to Disneyland. Well, telling them. <laughs> no, it's not the same, but my dog, uh, my dog's gone, well, he's lost an eye, and he's got, well, the vet reckons he's got about 30% peripheral vision in his, in his uh, remaining eye. Who thinks I should get the vet to, to put him down? No. Canal it is. <laughs> if he'd wanted to live, he would have won the fight with a badger. <laughs> a lot of men like it when the collars and cuffs match, but I wouldn't want to date a bald lady. That took you a while to get. <laughs> Apparently, women like chocolate because it stimulates them in the same way as sex, which I think goes some way towards explaining the popularity of the chunky Kit Kat. <laughs> I've never found chocolate to be an aphrodisiac. The only way a chocolate bar is going to help my sexual performance is if I use it as a splint. <laughs> or bait. I've got a friend that took me to one side recently. He said, what does it mean if on a first date a girl puts a cheeky finger up your bum whilst fellating you? I said, it means there's going to be a second date. <laughs> now, it's been a pleasure talking to you this evening in Glasgow. Firstly, thank you so much for coming out to see the show. I really do appreciate it. Um, well, thanks so much. I mean, it's been lovely. A couple of quick things just before I go. Um, if you've never seen a Punch and Judy show, I don't want to spoil it for you, but the man behind the curtain is a paedophile. <laughs> a lot of people don't think paedophiles should be allowed to live anywhere near schools, but it does reduce their carbon footprint. <laughs> the final thing, if you're scared of paedophiles, grow up. I've been Jimmy Carr. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Good night. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Thanks very much, Glasgow. I don't know if you realise as an audience what that noise means to performers. That simple act of applauding, it's everything you work for as a performer, but that noise could drive you mental. <laughs> Imagine if that happened when you left work. <laughs> you finished a busy day doing whatever you do with your lives, you finish work and 3,000 people go, fucking yeah! <laughs> You'd go a little bit, mm, hello, I'm very special. So to keep my feet on the ground, to stop myself going crazy, I always remind myself, Glasgow, that is less applauding than any of you individually would give to a waiter who dropped a tray. <laughs> it's true, though, isn't it? That is our best thing ever as a nation. I, I love it when you're away on holiday. If like you're, you're in the south of France or Spain or wherever, or f Birmingham. <laughs> I don't know. But I love it when you're away. You can tell where all the other British people are. Because when a tray goes over in a restaurant, we're the ones going, you clumsy fucking cunt. <laughs> Obviously, it's a family show. 
I've noticed a thing, I go out to see a lot of comedy shows, and I've noticed a thing, comics tend to do their best stuff right at the end of the gig, and then they leave the audience wanting more. Sounds good, doesn't it? But it doesn't make any sense. Because you, the audience, are left wanting more, and the comedian has fucked off. <laughs> That doesn't make any sense, so what I'd like to do, because I've given it some thought, I'd like to torpedo this gig with some very unpleasant jokes <laughs> that will offend and upset you all. <laughs> yeah. And then you can all leave thinking, thank fuck that's over. <laughs> You're welcome. Let's begin. If women are so good at multitasking, is it too much to ask? Tickle my balls while you work the shaft. <laughs> half a joke, half public service announcement. <laughs> I often get asked, are you ever going to get married? I don't think I ever will get married. I mean, you can't get married at 16 without parental consent. <laughs> and that's not going to happen. They still think she's dead. That's an unfortunate reaction, because that's only there to warm you up for this one. <laughs> Did you all read that story about the girl that was kidnapped and kept in squalid conditions for 18 years? Did you read that story? Yeah. Was I the only one that read that story and thought, 18 years in squalid conditions? Have a tidy round. <laughs> Make a house a home, you lazy bint. Say what you like about the Make-A-Wish Foundation. They can work to a deadline. <laughs> it's only words, nothing bad's happened. It's not like I've drop-kicked a kitten into an orphan's face. <laughs> once, I did that once. And it was fucking funny, but you sort of had to be there. <laughs> I think I've sorted out the credit crunch. I thought you'd be pleased. <laughs> no, I, I genuinely, I think I've sorted out the credit crunch. You know what the problem is with, it, with the credit crunch? As I, as I, in layman's terms, okay, the trade, the turnover, the cycle of business isn't happening in the way it was because businesses and banks and countries have gone bust and no one trusts each other. So how are we going to repair this? How are we going to get things started again, get that virtuous circle up and running? I'll tell you what we do. We build a world trade centre. I can see you sat there with your arms crossed, thinking that's going to be a fucking big building. <laughs> We're going to have two of them. <laughs> I saw the chief of the New York City police on the news. He said, we will never forget 9-11. I thought, what's your fucking home, not your phone number? I do love doing these gigs. I mean, I'm so glad I, I, I recorded the DVD in Glasgow, but the, the, it, these gigs, just the fact that everyone sort of shares a sense of humour, that's such a sort of special thing. Everyone appreciates as well. Everyone gets it. Everyone in this room gets the fact it's just jokes. We're just messing around, trying to have a laugh together. It's just messing, you know. These jokes aren't who I am. I'm actually, I mean, in the real world, I'm quite a generous sort of person. So I realise that makes me sound like a dick. <laughs> but, you know, I'm quite a giving sort of person. I mean, last year I donated a kidney. Yeah. Of course, they wanted to know where I got it from. <laughs> I know it's still warm. Keep it. <laughs> I often get asked... Someone asked earlier a favourite joke or rudest joke. Um, I got asked in Liverpool last year, someone said, uh, favourite pub joke. Someone shouted out at the end of the show. So I thought I'd end by telling you my favourite pub joke. It's quite a rude joke. <laughs> I think you all knew it was going to be fairly rude. But I'll tell you, and then I'll tell you why I'm telling it. Um, I got asked, favourite favorite pub joke in Liverpool, and uh, so I said, I told my favourite pub joke, what's the difference between football and rape? Girls don't like football. <laughs> that is a textbook response, Glasgow. It's a laugh followed by a ooh. <laughs> the interesting thing for me is that that's not two distinct groups of people. There's not one group laughing and another group going ooh. Those are the same people. That joke makes you a little bit schizophrenic. Because <laughs> you don't choose what you laugh at. I'm sure many of you have been disgusted at what you've been laughing at this evening. But you don't choose what you laugh at. It's like a reflex. You just laugh. And then another bit of you kicks in and goes, what the fuck are you doing laughing at that? <laughs> ooh. So I told it in Liverpool. It got a laugh, and then an ooh, and then there was a pause, and a woman at the back went, I like football.
Imagine that being your problem with that joke. <laughs> she clearly had time to think, well, we all like it rough once in a while. <laughs> He's got us there. But I also enjoy soccer. Now I'm taking a stand. <laughs> well, as I say, it's been a pleasure performing in Glasgow. I mean, the reason we did the DVD here is because it's sort of the, one of the best gigs of the year. I just, I fucking love it. Um, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, just a couple of... Just one quick thing before I go. If anyone wants an autograph or to say hello after the show or to get fingered or to have a fight... <laughs> Whatever you would like. I'll be down there in that corner. I'm more than happy to wait as long as it takes. Thank you so much for coming out to see me, and I'll see you all again next year. Thank you very much indeed. Cheers. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.